Have you ever wondered where the story of Pakistan begins? The tale unfolds around 4,500 years ago in the fertile basin of the Indus River. This was the cradle of the ancient Indus Valley civilization, a culture as sophisticated as it was expansive. And at the heart of this civilization were the cities of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. These archaeological gems reveal a society that was remarkably advanced for its time. The inhabitants of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa displayed an impressive understanding of urban planning, with well-organized cities, complex drainage systems, and even multi-story buildings. These cities were also bustling hubs of trade, with connections stretching as far as Mesopotamia. The Indus Valley civilization was not just about commerce and urban sophistication, though. It was also a melting pot of culture, with unique art, distinct religious beliefs, and a still undeciphered script. Thus began the tapestry of history in a region that would eventually become Pakistan. But how did Islam, a major religion in Pakistan, make its way to the subcontinent? Let's take a leap into history. The arrival of Islam in the Indian subcontinent dates back to the 8th century. It was brought by Arab traders and later spread through invasions and conquests by Muslim rulers, such as Mahmud of Ghazni and Muhammad bin Qasim. These rulers were instrumental in establishing Islam in the region, paving the way for the creation of Islamic empires. The Delhi Sultanate, founded in the 13th century, was a significant milestone in this Islamic progression. It was later followed by the renowned Mughal Empire in the 16th century. These empires not only extended political and geographical influences, but also introduced Islamic culture, art and architecture, enriching the subcontinent's cultural tapestry. Such was their impact that even after their decline, the strong Islamic influence persisted, shaping the region's socio-cultural landscape. These empires left an indelible Islamic imprint on the region. The Mughal era was more than just political dominance, wasn't it? This epoch in South Asia was marked by a vibrant cultural flourishing, as the Mughal rulers, including luminaries like Akbar the Great, Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb, were patrons of art, architecture and literature. This was an era of grandeur and beauty, where majestic forts, palaces and mosques were constructed, each a testament to the exquisite Mughal architecture. The Taj Mahal, a marvel in white marble, is a shining example of this era's architectural prowess. Literature too blossomed under their rule, with works in Persian, Urdu and regional languages, reflecting the diverse cultural milieu of the empire. Moreover, this period witnessed a fascinating synthesis of Hindu and Muslim traditions, giving birth to a distinctive Mughal culture, a blend of Persian, Turkic and Indian traditions. The Mughal era, thus, was a period of cultural renaissance. What happened when the British arrived on the scene? Well, the British East India Company, a commercial entity, initially set foot on the Indian subcontinent for trade purposes. However, by the mid-18th century, it had transitioned into a political and military power, colonizing large parts of the region. This colonization, later known as the British Raj, brought about significant changes in society, economy and governance. British policies introduced a new administrative system, modern education and infrastructure development. Yet, these advancements came with a heavy price. Traditional industries declined, poverty increased, and the social fabric was altered. Simultaneously, the British rule stirred a sense of nationalism. The exploitation and discrimination under colonial rule ignited a collective desire for self-governance among the people. This led to the emergence of various nationalist movements, both secular and religious, aiming to liberate the subcontinent from British control. The seeds of independence were sown during this period. How did the idea of a separate Muslim state come into being? This question takes us to the year 1906, when the All India Muslim League was founded. Born out of a desire for political representation, the League sought to safeguard the rights of Muslims within a largely Hindu-dominated subcontinent. As the years rolled on, the League's ambitions grew. They began to envision a political framework where Muslims could exercise their rights freely, without fear of marginalization. This vision culminated in the Lahore Resolution of 1940. The Lahore Resolution, often considered the Magna Carta of Pakistan, 
was a formal political statement adopted by the League. It called for the creation of independent states in the northwestern and eastern Muslim-majority regions of India. This was the first official demand for what would eventually become the nation of Pakistan. The Lahore Resolution was a pivotal moment in the history of Pakistan. This momentous decision charted a new course, setting the stage for the creation of a separate Muslim homeland. 1947 was a landmark year, but why? In that year, the world witnessed the largest mass migration in human history, a result of the partition of British India. This monumental event was driven by growing tensions between Hindus and Muslims, exacerbated by British divide and rule policies. The demand for a separate homeland for Muslims began to gain traction, and the man at the helm of this movement was none other than Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Jinnah, a barrister by profession, was a key figure in the All India Muslim League. He championed the cause of a separate Muslim state, arguing that Hindus and Muslims were two distinct nations, with their own customs, traditions and values. He believed that Muslims would never be able to exercise their rights fully in a Hindu-majority India. This idea became a rallying cry for Muslims across India. The Lahore Resolution of 1940, also known as the Pakistan Resolution, was a pivotal moment in this struggle. It called for independent states in the northwestern and eastern Muslim-majority regions of India. This was the first official call for what would eventually become Pakistan. Fast forward to 1947, and the British, weakened by two world wars and a powerful Indian independence movement, decided to relinquish their hold on India. The British India was to be divided along religious lines, creating two independent dominions. Hindu-majority India and Muslim-majority Pakistan. The partition sparked a mass exodus, with millions of Hindus and Sikhs heading towards India and Muslims towards Pakistan. It was a time of colossal human displacement and unthinkable violence, with communal riots leaving a deep scar on the subcontinent's psyche. On August 14, 1947, the Dominion of Pakistan was born, comprising two geographically and culturally distinct areas, West Pakistan, present-day Pakistan, and East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, separated by a thousand miles of Indian territory. Jinnah became the new nation's first governor-general. Thus was born Pakistan, a new nation on the world map, a land of promise and potential, forged in the crucible of struggle and sacrifice, carrying the hopes and aspirations of millions of Muslims. Has Pakistan's political journey been smooth? Well, let's delve into that. The country's history is marked by periods of military rule and political instability. From the presidency of Ayub Khan in the 60s to Pervez Musharraf in the early 2000s, military leaders have often taken center stage in Pakistan's political theater. These periods of military rule, often punctuated with coups, have had far-reaching impacts on the nation's democracy and governance. This instability has created a complex socio-political environment for Pakistan. The alternating periods of civilian and military rule have left lasting impressions on its political landscape. The military's involvement in politics has often led to constitutional crises, political unrest, and periods of martial law. This, in turn, has affected the functioning of democratic institutions, disrupted the political balance, and created challenges in governance. So, to answer our initial question, Pakistan's political journey has been anything but easy. So, where does Pakistan stand today? In the contemporary world, Pakistan faces a multitude of challenges, yet it also holds a wealth of opportunities. The country is at a crossroads with the potential to shape its future in a way that could significantly elevate its standing on the global stage. One of the most pressing issues is economic development, Pakistan has a vibrant market with enormous potential, but the country needs to tackle issues like unemployment, inflation, and fiscal deficits. Despite these hurdles, the growth of industries such as information technology and textiles, coupled with a burgeoning middle class, presents promising opportunities for economic resurgence. Education is another area where Pakistan faces both challenges and opportunities. With a significant proportion of the population under the age of 15, the need for quality education is paramount. 
While the country grapples with issues like low literacy rates and gender disparity in education, the growing emphasis on digital learning and educational reforms promise a brighter future for Pakistan's youth. Healthcare, too, is a critical area of focus. While Pakistan battles issues like inadequate health infrastructure and a high infant mortality rate, there are positive strides being made in the form of increased healthcare funding and the proliferation of telemedicine services. Infrastructure development is another key area where challenges meet opportunities. Despite grappling with issues like power shortages and inadequate transportation systems, the country is witnessing a surge in infrastructure projects, particularly under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which aims to bolster economic growth through improved connectivity. Lastly, the quest for regional peace and stability remains an ongoing challenge. Yet, Pakistan continues to play a crucial role in fostering dialogue and diplomacy in the region, holding the potential to become a beacon of peace. In conclusion, while Pakistan does face considerable challenges, it is important to acknowledge the opportunities that these challenges present. The country is on a path of transformation, and with the right choices, it has the potential to shape a promising future for its people. Despite challenges, Pakistan continues to stride forward, holding a unique place in the annals of world history.